Asiasi, zero targets again. Keen again inactive. And this is where, again, the frustration is going to bubble here, fair or not fair, which is, I, I, I mean, as you said, you don't know what it is. It could be talent evaluation. Do you even want to continue? Wait, like, do you, do you even want to spend any more currency? going out and getting somebody you want to you want to kick another second round pick for a muhammad sanu type who just got released again by the way if you guys want him he's there he's available you know you want another washout i really don't know i mean it's i i, I don't think there's an easy answer but there's going to be a lot of anger this week over oh, yeah. this because yeah Certainly. And I think to me, the anger is definitely warranted. But secondly, to me, I don't think that this is just about talent evaluation. I think a lot of people want to make it about talent evaluation and say, oh, Belichick can't draft. How did he see Nikhil Harry was a better wide receiver pick than D DK Metcalf or, or than AJ Brown? And maybe that was a slight miss on talent evaluation. I'm more concerned about what is happening with these receivers when they get in the building. You know, what, where, what are they getting coached? What, where is the, you know, kind of the improvements? Where's sort of the coaching happening here? They, and this is sort of something that I think is being under reported, under talked about is that for two years in a row now, they've had basically rookie wide receiver coaches coaching a group of a lot of young players, a lot of important young players. Nikhil Harry, you spend a first round pick on him, and then you have Joe Judge and Mick Lombardi coaching him his first two years in the league. Those are not exactly, you know, these stud wide receiver coaches that have been around for 20 years. So that's the biggest thing I, I am wondering too, is that, is it not just talent evaluation? Is it also once we get them in the building that we're not doing a good enough job of coaching them up once they're here. And, and, yeah. and that to me is why this is such a systematic failure is that it's, yeah, you can live with, okay, Nikhil Harry might not have been the right pick, but if you can get 800 yards out of him in, in his second season, you say, okay, whatever, you know, at least that, that's better than nothing. Right now they're trending yeah. towards closer to 600, maybe 550 in his second year. And I really do wonder if this is a coaching problem and a talent evaluation problem with receivers, because now it's just becoming so widespread with this team that it can't possibly just be talent evaluation. It's got to be the whole card. Yeah, it's endemic. The whole deck. Yeah. Right. And, and, and where's preseason uh, darling gunner, you know, I mean, it's uh, you know, that's, yeah, that's a great question. I don't know. know. And that's, I, I, I don't know. You, you like, you almost, I, I don't know if it again comes back to just, you know, it's in order to get in there, you have to know everything and it's got to be safe and they won't put anybody out there who doesn't understand every single wrinkle in the playbook. And so, you know, you got to, you know, it's like a boy scouts, you got to earn X amount of pins or badges right. before you move on to the next thing. And some of them just can't get out there yet for whatever reason, they haven't earned their stripes. I don't know, but you know, anything just you just you'd want to see anything different that's why like damian harris two games ago was such a revelation it was right. like all right at least it's somebody different it's fresh legs it looks good I, but i don't know I, it's again i right. think the biggest thing is is to me and listen it's never this simple in football but what you look at the, what they ask these receivers to do in other systems, for instance, I I, I don't want to keep on harping on the DK Metcalf versus Nikhil. No, but thing. Metcalf but has asked to do very little. Right, I think he wouldn't he's, be he's playing here either. So obviously, he's in a fantastic situation in Seattle with one of the best deep ball throwers in right. the last two decades, three decades in the NFL, and Russell Wilson. But they basically asked him, especially his rookie year, he was running slant, he was running go, and he was running wide receiver screens. He had like three or four routes in his entire tree. 80% of his production came on three different routes as a rookie. They're not asking him to run option routes. They're not asking him to read out leverage right. and make decisions off that. They're not asking him to do all these complicated things. They're, not te they're telling him, hey, give good effort in the run game. Block right? Just block your butt off. But we're not going to sit here and spend half of practice worrying about how you can crack block or not, right? And that's the difference, I think, is what we're seeing is that the complexity of what they're asking these guys to do, it's clearly to me, it's clearly in Nikhil Harry and Devin Asiasi's heads that they got to think through a million different things before they even get to the point of making the catch. You know what I mean? That Everybody's talking about how Nikhil Harry isn't as good as he was after the catch as a rookie now. And I think a lot of it's because he's overthinking it. And you talk to players that have played in the system that have both success and failure. 
the one thing that they say is that instantly when you get into the system at first, you do a lot of thinking. And when you're thinking that much, you can't play fast. You can't play 100% speed because you're so busy right. worrying about what you're supposed to be, where you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to be doing. And, and right now, I think that we're seeing a lot of that with those two guys is that they're in their own heads, whereas Nikhil's just so worried about running the proper route that he's not even worried necessarily about making plays. And I think the reason why he did make plays against Seattle is because they played so much zone coverage that he wasn't worried about reading out leverages. He wasn't worried about, you know, how am I going to defeat this press man corner? He was just going out there, finding pockets of space and making himself available to the quarterback. Right. If they can get teams to play zone against them, they can be effective. Why in the would you? Game. But if you play straight up man to man against this team, as has been the case for basically three or four years running now, they have a tough time moving the yeah. football. 